If you like these videos and you want to see them a day before they go up on YouTube, head over to Library. It's an awesome alternative to YouTube and I absolutely love it. Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite oxymoron, Gardner. Today I wanted to talk about Mozilla because, you know what, Mozilla is incredibly important. Uh, I know that a lot of people are going to think, oh geez, here he goes again talking about frickin' Firefox. And yeah, so Mozilla announced a new a program called Promoted Add-ons, where an eligible add-on can pay to have a verified badge added after its name and be promoted on addons.mozilla.org, or AMO for short. The pilot program will start towards the end of this month and will run through November 2020. And there are a few reasons why Mozilla is doing this, but the, the biggest ones seem to be that, quote, they want to expand the number of add-ons that they can review and verify as compliant with uh, Mozilla's policies and provide developers with options for boosting their discoverability on AMO. This is according to Mozilla's, uh, oh geez, Jorge Villalobos, I hope that I said that right, uh, product manager for AMO. So what does this all mean? Well, this article goes into more detail to explain Quote, last summer we launched a program called Recommended Extensions, consisting of a relatively small number of editorially chosen add-ons that are regularly reviewed for policy compliance and prominently recommended on AMO and other Mozilla channels. We would love to review all add-ons for AMO for policy compliance, but the cost would be prohibitive because they are performed by humans. Still, there are developers who tell us they would like to have their add-ons reviewed and featured on AMO, and some have indicated a willingness to pay for these services if we provided them. So the promoted add-ons program will enable Mozilla to deliver what some of these developers have been asking for. They want to have their products manually reviewed and verified and have a badge available on uh, the add-ons page. And additionally, they'll be able to pay extra to have their verified products uh, placed prominently on the AMO home screen. I think that's all pretty cool, honestly. So the testing for this program will actually be free for the accepted uh, applicants. Uh, and there'll be about 12 of them in the pilot program. And add-ons will only be eligible if they meet the following criteria. First, they have to already be listed on AMO. Uh, they have to be based in the United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, uh, the UK, uh, Malaysia or Singapore because of how the payment processing will happen at the end of the pilot program. And the add-on must pass manual review. Um, if it doesn't pass, it doesn't get into the program. And I think the most interesting thing about this whole article is that at the end, Mozilla says that they are planning on streamlining the add-on uh, contribution experience later this year, and they hope to, uh, quote, explore features that will make it easier for people to financially support the add-ons that they use regularly. Quote, these features will be free to all add-on developers and remain available whether or not the promoted add-on pilot graduates. Okay, so I have a couple of thoughts here. Honestly, at face value, everything mentioned here seems perfectly good to me. Like, Mozilla is one of the most important companies in the tech industry, and they've been looking to secure alternative revenue streams for a while now. Um, if they can nail this, if they can get this off the ground, I think that's a good thing for Mozilla, and I think that's a good thing for the rest of the internet as a whole. It will be interesting to see how such sponsored placements will actually deliver value for people paying for it. As long as good value can be delivered to these add-on developers from Mozilla in an honest way, and by honest I mean uh, not like the looking glass shenanigans from a few years ago, I think that this would be good for everyone who uses Firefox. Uh, though I do worry about some of the potential ramifications. I, I, I am concerned that this might create a sort of stratification between Firefox add-ons that pay for this verification and those that don't. However, all of this is done manually and I really don't believe that uh, Firefox would ever be able to scale up to a level of manual verification where uh, there's gonna be like a significant stratification. I, I really don't see that as possible. While doing this research, I came across a ton of comments from some idiotic netbeards who have uh, just this inexplicable hatred of Mozilla, but a hatred that I've come to expect. So I wanted to go over a few of the more awful comments that I found and rebut them a little. So you frack everything says, 
Mozilla's management are so dumb, to be honest, there is no reason to use Mozilla anymore other than a moral one. Chromium has one already and Firefox is dying a slow death, but I'll probably continue to use it until it dies because I'm a loyalist. Okay, that is a really dumb comment, but then Yuma Tuba chimes in and says, half true. If they would cut out the JavaScript and HTML5 crap and focus on plain XML and CSS speed plus Rust sandboxed application extensions, they could easily be the fastest browser with most features. If you, however, support a gazillion features, you will die as smaller and less funded company. <laughs> Not to mention the useless quote leadership. I can't express just how truly dumb I think both of these comments are. I mean, first of all, if you're a Firefox loyalist, how do you also uh, stand idly by as Firefox is dying a slow death? Like, how do you just accept that? That doesn't make any sense to me. And I asked the same question again, but, but change it a little. How is Firefox the only moral option and yet you're still okay with it dying a slow death? Dude, please. What the hell? And then this other Rick over here posits that Firefox would be a better, more appealing and more successful web browser if it abandoned JavaScript and HTML5. Are you kidding me? HTML5, a HTML and CSS parsing is like 7% maybe of the entire modern web. If you dropped HTML5 support, you wouldn't have Hulu or Netflix. And some of you might think, oh, that's a good thing, but how could you how could you reasonably expect that a web browser without the the services that normal people depend on even stuff like your online banking how could you imagine a web browser that doesn't have any of that stuff is more appealing to the average person i mean that would just drive down the potential market share of firefox uh and so that's a dumb comment i have to say i mean the, the level of stupid in this comment has to have come from someone with a computer science degree. <laughs> no offense to computer science majors out there, but y'all kind of baffle me sometimes. <laughs> All right, now we have a comment from you 2 megawatts. I'm not sure why most add-on devs would bother with this. I think reputable add-on devs wouldn't care, and the only ones that would are uh, use this are unreputable ones that want to be promoted on the front page. I'd worry about uh, bait and switch add-ons where they get an add-on approved and then they make a small change that slips in malware at a later point. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a possibility, except they said right in the article, if you had read it, quote, verified badging. Developers will have all new versions of their add-ons reviewed for security and policy compliance. If the add-on passes, it will receive a verification badge on AMO and in the Firefox add-on manager. So there you go, overruled. So those are some of the Reddit comments. Let's look at the comments from the people uh, on the FUD article that was linked from Reddit. Shinto Plasm groans, I wonder if the next step will be to remove the free tier entirely or to demote free add-ons to a second class state with crippling limitations. Wow, I mean, if Shinto Plasm had read Mozilla's actual statement, he would have realized that Mozilla is rolling out these other features that uh, where developers will be able to accept payments from their users. And uh, you can bet your sweet bippy that Mozilla would pay be taking a cut of that. Um, so I think this, this kind of comment is just unreal to me. Like, uh, wow, okay. And then Yulia suggests, dumb is the one who is giving, not the one asking. Uh, expect garbage like honey to be promoted all over the place. And uh, wow, I mean, a comment that isn't total trash. I, I actually expect something like this to be the case. So if you read the article, you'll know that in order for a add-on to pass the review process, it actually has to conform to Mozilla's add-on policies. There's a link in the description to those. I'm not sure if something like honey qualifies as passing those policies. Uh, we'll have to see, won't we? But, uh, oh, ooh. You guys feel that? I think my blood internet toxicity level is uh, at a critical level for today. So I think I'm gonna log off. But before I do, I wanted to know what you guys think. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think about this. Do you think Mozilla will actually be able to execute this uh, well? Uh, hopefully they can. Um, leave a comment below or join the discussion over on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, uh, I want to thank the wonderful and not at all toxic people who make this show possible. Uh, the 110 amazing people over there, including the top tier support of Jim T. 
Thank you, Jim T. Your support is truly appreciated. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support the show over there. Join the discussion. We have a good time. But I think that's going to do it for now. Make sure you pick up a t-shirt or tell your friends about this show or share this video with your friends if you're so inclined. But no matter what you do, thank you so much. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time.